Good morning, YouTube. This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair in Clay Motion here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and this is the Clay Way. If this video is helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notification, sharing my videos, and sending me that sweet old thumbs up. If you got a question for me, you can hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger, and I'll happily try to answer them for you guys. Remember, don't be the next to them, be the first of you, and if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. Okay, so what we've got is a 2005 Toyota Highlander. We're gonna be doing a rear strut on this thing. I'm gonna show you how to disassemble the strut, remove it and everything. This should be the same procedure from 2001 and excessive years. If you look right down there on the bottom, I'll put the years in that this is available for. With the screwdriver or our hand, we're gonna pull this now up. Now what's going on is the top of this strut is actually broken. You can see it's protruding up. It shouldn't be doing that. So we're gonna take the strut out. My presumption at this moment is the top of the, the, what they call the bearing plate or the strut mount is broken. So it's allowing the strut to travel up. Before I jacked it up the first time, it was actually much higher than that. So we're gonna disassemble it, jack up the vehicle, put it on jack stands and remove the wheel. We're gonna start by removing the 21 millimeter lug nuts that hold the wheel on. Now we need to use caution when we're removing this strut because the top of the strut mount is broken. That means that the spring is more than likely gonna travel up. The good thing about this situation is that even with the bolts out, the spring can only travel up so far and it should go upward and not come down and hurt you with the strut there. But I can't be responsible for your type of situation that you have going on at home. Okay, if your top of your strut is protruding out like mine, we got several options. We can use a hacksaw, sawzall, set of torches, and we could just cut the spring if you're replacing the whole strut as one complete unit and you're not gonna compress it like mine. All we would need to do is cut one to two ribs out of here and that'll make the spring just fall down and not even be an issue. Now we're gonna spray a little bit of penetrant on our nuts and bolts just to ensure that they come loose. Now we're gonna take a 10 millimeter and we're gonna loosen up the ABS sensor wire that is connected to the strut. Now, in my situation, I'm lucky I have Moog aftermarket link pins. So if you're using a Moog, it has an 18 millimeter on the inside and a 15 millimeter on the outside. Like I said before, this is an aftermarket link pin. If this spins inside here, it is more than likely defective and it will give you a false reading of a bad strut because it makes a clattering noise as you hit bumps. These go out very often. They're designed to fail and they need to be replaced, but the good thing is they're generally only 20 or $30. On the back side of the strut, the brake line is held on by one 12 millimeter bolt that is on the opposite side right there. The next nuts and bolts that we're gonna remove and loosen are what called the strut mount bolts. They're 19 millimeters on each side. Here's a good tip for you. Make sure you use a shallow socket on these, preferably an impact. The reason for that is the further you get away from your work, the more torque that it's gonna take you to remove the nut or the bolt if it's stuck on really hard. In this situation, I'm using a very long half inch drive breaker to break these nuts and bolts free. I need to be as close to the work as possible. Now one of my bolts has fallen out, but I'm gonna leave the top bolt in here just in case when I go to take the bolts off of there, the nuts that are holding that down, the spring wants to come out, it comes out between the body and the strut mount. The top of the strut is held on by three 14 millimeter bolts. Now that bolt is tight.
you're gonna tap on this without the nut on there, just be, be gentle. Now I'm gonna raise it up and bring it out like this. My spring did not come separated from my strut because the hole is just wallered out in the center, allowing the strut to go up and not hold the strut into the center of the mount. So we're safe. They make three different kinds of strut compressors that I know of, or I at least have in the shop. This is the most common kind. This is called a McPherson strut compressor. And you obviously do exactly what it looks like. You put the springs on there and then you tighten it down with bolts. And then I have what's called a master spring compressor. And it works a little bit differently, but pretty much the same as the McPherson. And the one caveat of using this is that when you put these on the springs, these pins lock down to the spring. So you can remove it that way. If you're able to rent one of these, this would be the preferred choice for the at-home DIY. When I was setting up the video to remove this spring, the strut just fell right out. Sorry I didn't have it on video. So that tells me that this hole was wallered out pretty well. So be very careful when you're taking it apart. I will mention there was no tension on the spring and the spring did not come apart at all. Setting the parts side by side, we can definitely tell what the problem is and what happened. Okay, we're gonna slide our new boot on the top of there. And then this washer will go down in there and then our nut will fit on the top of that. Okay, now we've got our strut that's not gonna fall apart on us in the strut compressor properly, and we've got it tightened down. Now we're gonna take off the top nut. We've got a little bit of tension on the spring, so we know the top of it isn't gonna blow off on there, and we just basically turn it down a little bit, just so we know the spring is held. Now with our nut and our washer out of there, we can pull our bearing plate off. I call them bearing plates. Actually, it's a strut mount on the back. Bearing plates are on the front struts. Using our press to press the spring a little bit, we're able to insert our spacer, then insert our nut on there. We're gonna tighten our nut down a little bit, and then we're gonna release the spring pressure and then tighten down the nut the rest of the way. Before we remove our spring tension, we wanna make sure that our spring is inside the pockets and our plate is still clocked properly with the output. We wanna make sure that that's lined up with that. So we reinstalled the struts the same way we took them out and they're back inside there and everything is great and the kids are gonna be safe. Hopefully you guys found the video to be helpful, informative, so please consider subscribing, clicking the notification, sharing my videos, and give me them sweet old thumbs up. Remember, don't be the next to them. Be the first to you, and if anyone else can do it, I promise you, you can do it too. If you've got a question for me, hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair, and I'll happily try to answer them absolutely free of charge for my subscribers. God bless.